Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's uh, open our, our Bibles. I'll be very brief because of time. In Ephesians uh, chapter 3 from verse 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. We are still continuing with our series of the power of God. And today we are discussing about another dimension of the power of God called the dunamis dimension. The word dunamis is D-U-N-A-N-I-S, dunamis. It is a Greek word which in English it is basically defined or dunamis is equivalent to a dynamite or dynamic. A dynamite or dynamic. When we say dynamite, dynamite is equivalent to an explosive. Hallelujah. It is equivalent to an explosive. Those people who work in quarries, those people who know about uh, mining, they use a lot of the explosives, which we call dynamites or mines. So we are, this kind of power is a dynamic explosive power, is a dynamic and explosive power. In the Bible, it's normally the power of working of miracles. It is normally the power of working miracles because in miracles we can never predict God. When God is moving in the this dimension of power, it is the power which he normally applies when doing signs and wonders and miracles. So today you are going to leave this place and you, our online viewers, wherever you're watching us from, you are going to see the dynamic power of God working in your life. Because the Bible says we don't just uh, talk with enticing words, but we speak with the power. We speak our words that produce power. Hallelujah, somebody. And why we are talking about the power of God in this time round is because our foundation is not on the wisdom or on canon knowledge. It is not on the wisdom of man. Our faith is based and the foundation of our faith is on the power of God. What God can do, no man can do. Hallelujah. In this season and time, I, my prayer for you and myself is God to do something that no man can boast of doing in my life and your life. Mayale ekizite de bahayan talia, eso badia kayan tali bahan to paya, la kuvalia sumba lika tayan bahaya. This season, my prayer for someone, you you are watching us live, you you are watching us wherever you are watching us from, is God to do something that no man can ever boast of doing it for you and me. Hallelujah, somebody. I can already feel the presence of God in this place. I can already feel the dynamic power of God moving in your life and in my life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. So the Bible is saying in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 20, I want to dissect it and define it for you. Slowly, slowly. Mpola, mpola. Hallelujah. We want to dissect, divide this thing. We understand this scripture a little bit. It is saying, now unto him, that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And then there is a condition there. The condition is God can do exceedingly and abundantly far beyond what you can ask or think about. Imagine that. God can do more than that prayer you are asking more than that thing you are thinking about if i really get this mama way i'll be anything hallelujah god can give you more than that you are thinking and desiring in your heart hallelujah but there is a condition the condition is this he can do more than we ask or imagine according to the dynamics that works in you Meaning, it is not only relying on God for this to happen. It is relying on me and you. Hallelujah. 
there is a power that is residing inside you that is able to access this thing that you are asking God for in the New Testament everything is already done for you and me in the New Testament the difference between the Old Testament believers and the New Testament is because us whatever you are desiring is already done Jesus said at the cross it is done it is finished you do no we no longer need to appease God with the blood of animals so that he can cover our sins he already paid that price with Jesus hallelujah somebody he already paid the price now in the new testament the challenge of believers is to access if you can have access to what is already done then you are there hallelujah somebody that's why jesus said i am the way he did not say i am a way he said i am the way if you can access him if you can go through him then you can find the thing you want am i speaking to somebody the bible says that christ is the power and the wisdom of god i believe in first Cor uh, corinthians chapter 1 verse 12 or 15 there if that is the scripture it says christ is the power and the wisdom of god christ is the power and the wisdom of god if you have christ if you accept and receive jesus as your lord and a savior and you know him already you have, have permission to access the power of god hallelujah somebody then in Mark chapter 12 verse 24 it says we need to understand the power of God and the word of God so that we do not err are you understanding and Jesus answering said unto them do ye not therefore err because ye know not the scriptures neither the power of God when someone doesn't understand the scriptures and the power of God whether they call themselves Christians born again they may error in their lives for example this dimension we have talked about two dimensions in the previous Sundays we talked about the coach dimension of power which is the power God gives us to be fruitful hallelujah then there is another dimension we discussed last Sunday it is the exousia dimension if you do not you are Christian and you do not you are still struggling financially you're still struggling to be fruitful for the kingdom of God. You find someone has been a Christian for 20 years and they have never said uh, uh, evangelist even to 10 souls. They go to church, they come to church every Sunday, they eat sacrament, holy communion, but they have never won a soul for Christ. They are lacking something. They are lacking some knowledge and some power. Hallelujah. They don't understand something which others understand. Hallelujah, somebody. You find someone is born again for 20 years, 10 years. They don't know even how to cast a demon of flu. When they have flu, pastor, I have flu. Pray for me. Hallelujah. It is important we know. The Bible says in Psalms, Psalms 147 verse 5, it says... We cannot, with the human mind, we cannot comprehend the power or the magnitude of the power of God. Psalms 147 verse, I believe 6 or 5. It says, great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. That's why I said I'll just try to explain the dimensions of the power of God but we cannot exhaust this is not all hallelujah now the dynamis power we are talking about it is a power which resides in you or can come upon you anytime and God starts using you and me to do wonders signs and wonders if we read in Acts chapter 6 verse 8 we are going to see a man called Stephen. Stephen, in those days, he was just a deacon. 
He was not even an apostle. If you, you are saying, ah, ha, ah, maybe apostles will do that. Maybe prophets will just do that or pastors. No, Stephen was a what? A deacon. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. It says what? And Stephen, full of faith and power. The word power there is dunamis. Did great wonders and miracles, miracles among the people. You are saying, ah, those things, they are only for pastors, for prophets and apostles. A deacon was someone who was entrusted in the things of minding the stomach of the people who are hungry to feed them. Someone who was like an administration, an admin in the church. But the Bible says he was full of faith and power. So in this dimension, we normally operate with the faith we have. It is a dimension of faith. That's why you hear the gift of faith coming in. The gift of working of miracles comes in. It is in this dimension we are talking about. Hallelujah, somebody. That's why the same scripture we read in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, 21. It says, according to the power that works in you. That power has that the name according is a condition. And that power, just as the Bible is saying in Acts chapter 6 verse 8, that Stephen full of faith and a power, it works with the power. Ah, it works, that power works in relation to the faith, the amount of faith you have. I am very sorry, we don't have an instrument which measures faith. We can call it faithometer. We don't have a faithometer. Unfortunately, there is no instrument called faithometer. So, that's why when I came to realize when I pray for someone who is deaf, I pray for someone who is dumb and they are not delivered. The problem is not Jesus. The problem is me. How many of you have ever heard me telling, saying that? You have never heard me saying that? Yes, the problem is me. I have, my faith has not reached that level of praying for a dumb person, a lame person, HIV person. It is not God. God can do anything. The Bible says he's a God of impossibilities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The difference is our faith. The difference is your faith. When you see someone who is just tapping someone who is lame like this, and they are walking, or just in the Bible when Peter, Apostle Peter, his shadow touches the people who are sick, and they start getting healed. It is the level of faith and the power of God in them. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't want to teach how we build our faith. But one way of building our faith, putting muscles, is reading the word of God. The more knowledge you have of Christ, the more empowered you are. Hallelujah. The more you know scriptures. Number two, praying in the Holy Ghost. In the book of Jude, it says, building up your faith. I don't know whether it's verse 19, the book of Jude, it says, building up your faith, your most holy faith, meaning there even there are levels of faith. There is a holy faith, there is an holy faith, and there is the most holy faith. Building up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Am I speaking to two people, three people now? Amen. Hallelujah somebody. Amen. Now, in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 35, the Bible talks about Jesus. Luke chapter 4, verse 35, and it talks about Jesus when he is demonstrating two levels of power. That is authority and dynamis. It is says, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, let's start from 33. Luke chapter 4 verse 33 it says in the synagogue synagogue was a church like a setting like similar to this in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of unclean devil and he cried out with a loud voice ah let us stop there how can you be in the church and you have an unclean spirit there is a problem here you can be in the church and be possessed. There is a problem. Hallelujah. Verse 34. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? 
Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. We continue. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Verse 36. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits come out. Here Jesus is demonstrating two levels, dimensions of the power of God. The exousia dimension, which is authority, and the dunamis dimension, which is the power there. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus enters the synagogue. Demons start crying. And yet that synagogue, there was a chief priest and the demons were comfortable sitting together with the chief priest. <laughs> demons were sitting comfortably, cohabiting with the chief priest. But when Jesus, the man who is carrying the God's power, Christ is the God's power. Hallelujah. Amen. Is the power of God. Are you understanding here? Are you getting this? A demon can cohabit with a chief priest and they, they don't have any problem. A priest is the person who gives you Holy Communion, yes. collect tithe from you and offering. Hallelujah. Amen. And says, the, may the face of the Lord shine upon you and give you ironic blessing. And he gives you a hymn to sing. There shall be showers of blessing. And yet, demons are staying. A person possessed can stay with a priest in the synagogue. There is a problem here. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is the priest after the order of Melchizedek. That is a topic of another day. He is also a high priest, not just an ordinary priest. But at, after the order of Melchizedek, a synagogue was under a high priest in the order of Aaron. Hallelujah, somebody. Melchizedek is also a high priest who has no beginning, no end. Has no mother, no father. That is the story of another day I'll give you. Why he doesn't have mother, no father. He is a king of Salem, king of peace. He is a king and a priest. Jesus is a king and a priest and a prophet. Hallelujah, somebody. When you are operating in this dimension, you are already a terror to the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. You say, me too, I will operate in this level. Me too, I will operate in this level. Me too, I will operate in this level. Because it is written in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. These are the last words of Jesus. He said what? You shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come. Hallelujah somebody. The Bible says, but ye shall receive what? You shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in what? Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You want God to, you want to be an evangelist, you want to be a minister. You need dynamis power. The power which explodes like a dynamite. Imagine you, you are like a terrorist in the kingdom of darkness when you have this power. You know how terrorists, they explode themselves. Are you understanding? You already, if you have this power, you are a terrorist to the kingdom of darkness. Dynamis power. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. But there is something I want you to learn. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 9, Paul is recognizing something here and is something people do not understand. He's saying, God told him, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity, infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hey, if you want to carry power, you have to die. Lose yourself. The power of God doesn't operate in men who are not yet dead. 
Are you understanding? Paul was crying to God, remove a thorn in my flesh. Are you understanding? Yes. There are some things God can put in your life, it looks like a thorn. A thorn is something which is painful, something shameful in your life to humble you. Are you understanding? Yes. We cannot, if, if you follow those men of God and women of God, they are moving in this dimension. They must be dead. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it talks about hidden treasures in earthen vessels. We are just looking ordinary men. When they look at you, they say, but what is unique with this lady? What is so special about this guy? Because if it is eating, he eats like us, and it shits like us. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you got that scripture? Yes. It says, but we have this treasure in other vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Why God gives you this power and yet you have this weakness in the flesh, weakness, and as an ordinary man, you are limited as an ordinary man, ordinary man, is because the power belongs to God. It is not you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we are, say, we are discussing the power of God and the dimensions of God. This power is not yours. It is, belongs to God. And he gives whom is aligned to receive this power and operate in this dimension. Are you understanding something? We have to be involved. Paul realized something. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ who which strengthens me. If it was a general term, if it doesn't concern you as an individual, he could have said, we can do all things. There is a plot or there is a portion for you and me to play in order for this power to be operating in our life. Hallelujah, somebody. And I've already told you some of the things which we are supposed to do. And I told you this power is already available. It is you now to access it. In the New Testament, we are not doing anything. We are just having the grace to access what was done. This power is already available because the Holy Ghost is already here. Hallelujah. After Jesus was glorified, the Holy Ghost came in the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, it says, a mighty rushing wind came and people started praying or speaking in new tongues. Clovens of fire came upon them. Have you got that scripture? Acts chapter 2 verse 1. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there, there were all with one, or they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of, as of fire, or like as of fire. And it is sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And he began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. One of the signs or one of the ways to operate in this level of dunamis, the explosion level it is speaking in other tongues praying in other tongues so if you are born again if you are really need to operate in this level you need to ask god give me this gift of praying in other tongues it helps to generate that energy it is, the bible talks about it is edifying yourself the te the early technology of bicycles if you are not a dot com and if you, you, you experience this kind of technology in bicycles and you don't, you, are, you don't have kids and you are not married, you, what are you waiting for? Those days we didn't have batteries. 
So they were putting a dynamite and they could put uh, connected to the chain of the bicycle. And when the person is cycling, it charges that dynamite and light is produced. So when you are praying in other tongues, you are charging yourself and there is energy you are releasing. There is energy being produced as you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Jesus talked about in your bellies. I believe in John chapter 9 when he was talking to that Samaritan woman. John chapter 4. Thank you. He was telling her that out of thy bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. He is talking about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is equated to waters. Now, I want us to pray in the next 10 minutes. Let's raise up on our feet, wherever you're watching this telecast from. You can kneel down, you can stand, but I want us, you, you are here with me in our studio. Please join, don't be acting like uh, you are part of the chairs, you are not a chair. You are part of the service. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to pray in the Holy Ghost. We are going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are you ready somebody to pray in the Holy Ghost? Amen. We are going to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you have never received the gift of praying in tongues, I am praying for you as we are praying right now. May you receive that gift in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know which song we can sing, choir. We need a song. Oh, I 
in the book of Mark chapter 5, as we are still in the mood of prayer, there is a scripture I want us to read there, very important. Mark chapter 5, from verse 25, it says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and it was nothing bittered, but rather grew worse. Verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, and came in the press behind, and touched his garment. Verse 28. For, uh, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Verse 29. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed to that plague. Verse 30. And Jesus immediately knew, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? This is a very interesting story. Jesus had the word virtue there is the same word as power, which is dynamics we are talking about. When this woman touched Jesus, power left him. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So today we are praying that let us touch Jesus. If you can know how to touch him, don't ask me, where is Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. But this is a prayer point we are going to pray today. That Jesus, I want to touch you. I want to touch the hem of your garment. I want that my story to change. The Bible said, and that woman immediately she knew. No one told her that something has happened. Hallelujah. Amen. The word now there, it is something spiritual she immediately knew with conviction in the Greek I don't know whether it is iota or something like that it is an experience may you receive that experience today and you know that as you are watching this telecast as you are here in this place in our studio right now may you know that something today left you because of this dynamic power. Something that was looking a challenge for many years. This woman stayed with that issue of blood for 12 years. I don't know what is your issue, but I am praying for you right now, wherever you are and the one who are here in the studio. You were in that position like that woman for 12 years. She was having this issue of blood, but when she touched Jesus, the helm of his garment, virtual power left Jesus begin to pray 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 hey begin to pray say today that thing that has been staying in my life that problem that has been in my life for many years today because of this dimension of power it is leaving me it is leaving me Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. La kaya la bazoto le bakaya la boshata. Le kezo pa la kaya la bazala boshata la baya. Are you praying somebody? 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 Wherever you are watching us from, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Touch the helm of his garment. Touch the helm of his garment. Touch the helm of his garment. Jesus Christ is the power of God. Anything that doesn't go away, today it has, it must submit in the power that is in Christ Jesus. The dynamic power. That problem that has been with you for many years. That issue that has stayed permanently, like permanent in your life. That stagnation that looks permanent in your life. That issue that looks like it is part of your life right now. And you have nowhere to go. 
The Bible says that woman, she had gone, visited many doctors. Nothing was improving. Dr. Jesus is here. Begin to call upon him. Begin to call upon Dr. Dr. Jesus. He is here right now. Jesus, locate me. Jesus, locate me. Jesus, locate me. I, I, I want to touch you. I want to feel you. I want to touch you today. I want to touch you today. Let my issue disappear. Hey, today is my day. Today is my day. Today is my day. Today is my day. Poverty is leaving me. Hardship is leaving me. Hey, disappointment after disappointment is leaving me. Ayakaya la bossa taya le bossa taya. Maya la kaya la bossa le bossa taya. Le kaya la bossa le bossa taya maya la bossa. E kaya la 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 le bossa le bossa taya maya. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Pray, 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 pray. I want to touch you, Lord. I want to touch you, Lord. Something must change in my life. I want to touch you, Lord. I want to touch you, Lord. I want to feel you. Maya la kaya la bosataya la bosataya. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray wherever you're watching us from. Begin to pray, begin to touch on Jesus. Begin to touch him right now. As the woman with the issue of blood. Begin to touch him right now. Begin to touch him right now. Begin to touch the hem of his garment. Ay, 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 ay. Tell him today he's not leaving you with that situation. Tell him today is the end of my situation. Today is the end of my problem. Today is the end of my poverty. Today is the end of my hardship. Today is the end of my disease. Today is the end of affliction. We need your power. We need your grace. Hey, Receive, receive, receive. Begin to ask him. Begin to ask him something. The Bible says he is able to do more than we ask or think about. Begin to ask him that thing. Begin to ask him that thing. Ask him that thing. Ask him that thing. Ask him that thing that is too hard. Ask him that thing that looks too hard. Ask him that thing that looks impossible. Hey, if you want a car, ask him for the best. Ask him not for Chikumi. Ask him for a Mercedes Benz. Ask him for a Bentley. Ask him for a serious thing. Hey, he can do more than we ask or imagine. I can do a more satire. Can the level satire more satire? He can do a more satire more satire. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want from Jesus? What do you want from him? It is the time to ask him right now. Begin to ask him. Begin to ask him. Begin to ask him.
worship, worship the Lord, worship the Lord. Exceeding me, abandoning you are much more able to do. Oh, sufficient God. Oh, sufficient. you ask God for right now under this atmosphere it is answered in the name of Jesus Christ whatever that you have prayed today and ask God under this atmosphere right now I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God that thing you have prayed and asked God that thing that has been disturbing you for long that thing that looks insumptable in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus the son of the living God it must bow down in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus is lifted up above higher than any other name in the world underneath the world underneath the world in the waters at the name of Jesus every problem let it bow down today. Amen. Let it melt. Amen. By fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and declare a time like this tomorrow. Amen. You shall have the last laugh. Amen. That thing Amen. that has been looking like a shame in you. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Yeshua Hamashiach, the one who lived, died, and rose again. In the name of Jesus, Amen. a day like this tomorrow, a time like this tomorrow, Amen. you shall have the last love. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing to that who is watching us, wherever they're watching us from. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. For thy kingdom, thy power, and the glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. Glorify yourself in our lives. Amen. Glorify yourself in the earth. Let your government come in the earth. Amen. In this season, where the government of the children of the world and the darkness is trying to to cover the children of God. Amen. We decree the government of the Lord Amen. over rules. And it comes to liberate your children. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Comfort Omega No other name like the name of Jesus, I have another name. I go walking, no other name like him. The name of Jesus, is I have another name. I have no man. 